Back in November, I posted a video where this happened. So what the heck actually caused it? Let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about what happened and what didn't happen. First, let's get into the uh, engine management and the flight itself. Uh, if you remember, I did grab the wrong handle and start to adjust that. So what I've got here on the screen now is the direct download from the engine management computer. And the temperatures of the cylinders and the exhaust gas temperatures are a little bit high uh, at this point because before I start it, you can see here the RPMs are zero and then I start it right here at... Uh, uh, 17 30 and 14 seconds uh, i begin cranking the engine but the cylinder temperatures are higher at 150 degrees 175 degrees because uh, i'd already taxied the airplane and run it for several minutes uh, and then i just topped off the fuel at the fuel island um, when i started the engine uh, the second time uh, the cylinder, the exhaust gas temperatures climbed up to, you know, around 900 uh, when it's sitting there idling, and the cylinder head temperatures started to uh, rise. Uh, oil pressure uh, right here in uh, column K, um, you know, ha has good oil pressure, 56 PSI at idle, uh, everything's good. Um, Stepping back, when the IRAN was completed, the oil system was flushed, the oil cooler was taken off uh, and fully flushed. Um, uh, I've got some pictures here of that, and so that was all done. Um, as I taxied over, um, fairly idle, low, low idle, that sort of thing, 1300 RPMs during the during the taxi out to the run-up area, and everything was going smooth. Uh, exhaust gas temperatures are 1250, uh, cylinder head temperatures climbed up to uh, around 245, 250 degrees, so we're still right there nice and warm. Uh, the oil temperature got up to 100 degrees right before uh, 105, 107, 110 degrees right before I started the, the run-up. Uh, during the run-up, it's at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's within the green of the MVP50. So nice and nice and good there. Uh, cylinder or exa exhaust gas temperatures are in the 350. And cylinder head temperatures are climbing up, getting close to about 300 degrees. Cylinder head temperatures are what I'm concerned with with the flight. I don't want those to get up over, you know, 400 degrees uh, because then that starts to do damage. So everything's going smoothly during the run-up period. I idle down uh, or I check the mags and drop and all of this sort of thing. I'm, and then, um, then right about here at uh, 15, 35, 35, I start to apply full power. We can see that the RPMs start to climb and that the manifold pressure increases and it takes me about 10 seconds for me to go to full power. Uh, I get 26, uh, 2620 RPMs, uh, 30.5 uh, uh, gallons per hour of fuel and 35.9 uh, inches of manifold pressure. Um, so this is making basically full power, uh, 310 horsepower right there. Uh, and that continues at 35 inches for about 10 seconds. Uh, and then I start to adjust, or then I pull back on the, on the uh, throttle just slightly. You can't really see it in the video, but we're making full power, full power, full power for um, 
you know, a good 10 seconds and such. Then I back off the power to 30 inches. This is the cruise climb power setting that all of the manual says to do. Should I have done that, you know, 200, 300, 400 feet? No, I probably shouldn't have. Uh, I could have done that for, um, for a good four minutes. So then bring it down to 30 inches and then I start to try and adjust the um, propeller because it's right at 2700 RPM on the red line. Um, and I want to bring that back a little bit. So I reach over, I grab the knob, I think I grabbed the correct knob, it feels right, and I start to uh, pull the veneer, just twist it slightly. And we'll look here at the um, exhaust gas temperatures and such. From the point that um, I finished reducing the manifold pressure to the point where I begin adjusting the uh, mixture, the mixture only starts to go down just very slightly. I went from um, 12.8 PSI to 12.2 PSI. I went from 25.4 gallons per hour to 24.7 gallons per hour. Uh, the exhaust gas temperatures went from 14, let's see here, where's the highest one? 1446, and it went up to 1475. So only a 30 degree difference. Remember the reference for this uh, is 1550 on the EGT, um, and I think maximum is 1650. I'll have to look in the manual. Um, but exhaust gas temperatures only climb so much and then um egt climbs up to 1518 uh and uh cylinder head temperatures are right in the 340 330 350 on the hottest one 353 uh right before on cylinder five um and then i began to reduce the RPM. So I fix it and then I start, grab the right knob and reduce the RPM. Uh, I reduce the RPM. It takes me about four seconds to reduce from uh, 2700 RPM to uh, 2600 RPM. And the next sample, the engine lets go. As we can see here in this sample, as I reduce the RPMs, uh, the temperature never spikes, the oil temperature never spikes. The cylinder head temperature uh, remains pretty flat, uh, one or two degrees of increased temperature. And then a very abrupt two samples, it the engine's all the way down to idle almost. The oil pressure drops because uh, parts of the engine let go, so now it's spraying oil everywhere. And the fuel pressure drops because the fuel line got uh, ripped off of the off of the spider. So all of that happened and then the engine's making idle power. The engine is basically windmilling. So the temperatures were great, the fuel pressure was great, the oil pressure was great, the oil temperature was within the green range, everything was in the green, the RPMs were in the yellow because they were almost to red line and I was going to reduce those and then the engine let go. Caused the problem with my ham-fistedness of grabbing the wrong controls or doing this too early. What actually did happen then? So if you remember from December 5th, I was taking the engine to the engine shop. And it was an engine shop, not just my engine guy. He has employees and such. So when he started to take apart the engine, they found that two of the connecting rod end caps were all bent to crap. And several of the connecting rod end bolts had snapped. But they also found that one of the four counterweights was not connected to the crankshaft. So what he suspects happened is one of the circlips, which retains the pins that hold the counterweight to the crankshaft, was disturbed during the disassembly process. When all of the parts came in, a different person started to put the engine back together. Since the counterweights were left on the crank, the person who put it back together never touched any of the counterweights. What that person did do was that the cleaned all of the oil passageways, flushed out the oil cooler, replaced the bearings, the end cap bolts and end cap nuts, torqued them to proper spec, and followed the reassembly 
procedure for the steps that were supposed to have been completed. So what we suspect happened is that one of these counterweights came off of the crankshaft when I adjusted the RPMs and started bouncing around inside the engine. It completely destroyed this piston skirt, completely disconnecting the connecting rod from the piston. It destroyed this skirt as well. These two end caps got all bent up. It caused damage to the crank and to the cam shaft. It created all of this shrapnel and all of that carnage caused a hole to be poked in each half of the engine casing. And so the owner of the engine shop has changed a lot of his procedures that he's going to follow, even for repair type of work. He's standing behind his work. So what does that actually mean? That means I'm getting a complete zero time since major overhaul TSIO 520R. Overhauled crankcase, overhauled cylinders, overhauled oil cooler. Everything's been overhauled. Brand new oil pump. He's also paying for the second removal and reinstallation. He's paying for the propeller and prop governor to be re-overhauled. He's paying for the turbo system to be overhauled. Everything that has oil delivery that may have had metal contamination has either been replaced or overhauled. So what do we have now? Well, basically we've got the entire firewall forward, the engine, the turbo, the prop, the prop governor, everything is zero time since major overhaul. All right, since it's a complete overhaul, everything firewall forward is done. What do we need to do now? You know, he's taking care of it. We're sitting here at the airport. Well, let me tell you, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go take it for a test flight. We just pulled it out of maintenance and it's time to go try this all over again. I'm a little nervous, but uh, you know, Let's give this a shot, shall we? Here we go. Mm -hmm. 